actually was quite loud, wasn't it? It was a good clap, like, you'll see that. <laughs> well, I'll see that, you see. When yeah, I get a tracks and put them together, I'll be able to get rid of all that rubbish. I'll, I'll about use that before. technique on my yeah. editing as well. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, okay, so I'll just do a little introduction here. You can introduce yourself, right? Okay. But basically, um, Andy is here as my long-time buddy um, to make sure that um, I'm not bullshitting. Okay. Uh, because in the breakfast meetings, I always wonder, does he realize, uh, does he think what I'm saying is a load of rubbish? So obviously, I told him about um, yourself, and, uh, and he's going, mm. so then I thought, okay, so let's get him along and we'll have a chat about it. Yeah. So I just set, a press, set, set the context. So back at Christmas, was it Christmas Eve? It was, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, because yeah, we Christmas were all there Eve, drinking we were the silly, pub, weren't we? And we were uh, first in the pub. And so we started talking to each other across the room. Um, it was right. the dog's fault, wasn't it? Uh, the right. dog. The yeah, dog attracted yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And we started talking about dogs. He does have dog envy. Yeah, yeah I do yeah. have dog, <laughs> do have dog <laughs> envy. First thing he said when I arrived this morning, this place is missing a dog. It's every time I come here. It is actually. It is bad. Massively missing a dog. Yeah. One of ours. And whenever I talk about my old dog, it gets me upset. I get a bit teary, you know. Yeah, which you would. Yeah, so I might have done that. But I was also testing out some new glasses and I accidentally spilled a whole a beer over your uh, nether region. It was, yeah. It, it was, was early in the evening. It was well. early, yeah. But it, it, but it did dry out, though, by the it time we went out. home. So, so you, you were know, all right. I was yeah, all right, I mean, yeah. It must have been a shot. <laughs> it took me around the way a bit. Particularly when you're done. Particularly who's this arsehole? They drank a whole pint of beer. Anyway, so then you were interested in uh, what we, I was doing, that project I was doing, right, yeah. which I'm still doing, still hoping to do it. But, you know, uh, we're in this impasse at the moment. And then um, when I told you there was a bit of a delay in that project, you came up with this completely strange, nutty random, idea. Random. Random idea. And I thought, mm. why is he telling me that? I'm already feeling so depressed. I'm in the trough of disillusionment. But that was to get you out of that. Uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, to take me out of one yeah. thing that I was loving doing to something else that I absolutely love and seems a complete fairy tale to even consider doing anything. But anyway, so that interested me. And then a month or so later, I said, okay, let's get together and tell me about it. Right? So yeah. that. I thought, let's get, and you told me, and yeah. I recited the story to Andy, and even when I said it, I thought, what am I talking about? This is just so ambitious. So Ever let's so start, ambitious, let's yes. start by just saying, well, so yeah. just say, so we go for it slowly, yeah. right? so we all get to comprehend that, exactly, because there's so many points you were making. So first the, of all, it is, yeah, who it are is. you, Boz? Uh, Boz, I'm Nigel Bosworth, and I'm, uh, I've been involved in mo motorcycles for all my life. <laughs> And uh, I've moved from one thing to another purely by accident, ne never a plan. But I started uh, just riding on the road, which moved into racing because of a, a ban. Of, 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 I don't want to go too on for too long. But then. I'll shut you up. Yeah, shut me up, please. Yeah. We've actually got okay. a penalty for going on too long. Andy, you can go and fetch them in a minute. All right, okay. You I have like to that. wear the legs. Okay. Yeah. I'll be quick then. Um, and then I came, went into racing, did okay in racing, and then moved out of racing into management, you know, into testing. So I was a test rider, and we've developed our own bikes. Uh, and then I moved into management with, the, with uh, various British superbike and world superbike teams. Uh, then I went into, into manufacturers, motorsports, um, management. And then... Quite I, old then, aren't you? I am very old now, very old, yeah. And I only did. I only did. I only did three weeks. I only did three weeks each job. But yeah. and then, <laughs> one of those CVs. Oh yeah, yeah. And then uh, after uh, I worked, at, I worked in the MotoGP Academy. I worked with Silverstone uh, uh, to to on the bid to get the MotoGP there. Uh, then I've moved into. Uh, the clothing side of the business, so so Den Easy the manufacturing yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So you know, so it's Den Easy, not Dine Easy. I, I Den Easy, Den Easy, Den Easy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it depends. Sometimes it can be various, but okay. the Italians, I say Italians do. But so really, I've got a, I've got an insight at some point on on lots of uh, of the motorsport side of the business. Okay. So from from. Um, uh, racing, uh, um, testing, uh, developing, building, and managing uh, uh, anything in that okay, great. region. So, um, if I was to set this, this, the, the, the summer, the thing that you've said, right to me, which is why we're having a chat, just to set the context. <laughs> 
So it's the first question was, have you ever thought of running a racing team? That was the first. That one. was, wasn't it? Yeah. But then that evolved to, have you ever thought poor, about poor bird or something? Couldn't you? Sorry, no, what yeah, chance have you got? Yeah, we're long, we're long, long day. I did say this. I did say this. I love guy. racing bikes and everything, but I'm Paul Bird is a, a multi-millionaire who right. runs his own team. What is his own team? Where does he birds. get his money from? Birds, no, chickens. Shit, yeah, yeah. He's got the, one of the biggest chicken farms in in Europe. No way. Uh, yeah, and if he, his biggest customers are the four big supermarkets: Tesco, Sainsbury's, Morrison's. And, uh, so actually, put that I mean, together. I did yeah. often wonder where does he yeah. get because his lad's racing cars now, isn't he? Is he? Oh, okay. I think he's yeah. got his lad into cars, and he dabbled in MotoGP for a while. So, yes. so this yeah. this does help again frame this context. So you went from have you thought about running a race team, but then I have framed it now as uh, um, have you ever thought about creating a new British MotoGP racing bike and competing yeah. it in yeah. the world? Yeah. Now that, yeah, that, so that's a massive leap. Absolutely. That's one extreme to the other. Odd, yeah. But to go there is ginormous. Yes. So tell us a little yeah. bit. Without, well, without explaining yeah. the detail, we'll go yeah, through okay. the detail. We'll just give us a context because mm. it seems like an incredibly ambitious. Well, it is, it is hugely ambitious. Uh, MotoGP, right? That, that is probably, uh, it's, it's a long time away. And to get to that, you've got to start at a, an entry level. Yep. But it is doable. Now, if you do it the right way at an entry level, it will lead into MotoGP at some point. Because at the minute, all the teams in MotoGP are franchised. Mm -hmm. So they own that spot. And if you want that spot, you've got to pay a lot of money for it mm -hmm. if that franchisee wants to sell it. But 21, 2021, uh, there's new franchises. So... Trying to so get extra bikes on the grid. Yeah, yeah. So that, yeah. that's like the end of the current era of, of MotoGP. Agreement, MotoGP. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah that contract. All yeah. reconsidered. Yes. So there's new franchises available in 2021. Yes. 2021, okay. Yeah. So, but to get to that position, you've got to have a bit of credit, but you just can't turn yeah. up with a huge checkbook and say, oh, I want to be a MotoGP. It yeah. won't, that won't work. There's a few but, tried it with F1, weren't they, when they were looking yeah, for it, and it just never it fizzled did. to nothing. That's it. it, yeah, it didn't last long at all. Even if they? they've got the budget, they hadn't got the... No. Yeah. So, yep. so Moto, to get the, the stepping stone to MotoGP is a similar pattern to what KTM are doing, which is where they've got an academy, uh, and they've got... Uh, they, they've got the bikes now, they've got the Moto3 bike, they've got the Moto2 bike, and now they've got the MotoGP bike. And then now they've got a satellite team for the MotoGP. Cause you, so you go from, it's a natural progression there, isn't it? And Dorna, who own the MotoGP championship, will welcome that. And if it's got the tag British to it as well, which they desperately need, because it's basically an Italian-Spanish championship at the moment, yeah, and has yeah, been for a long time. Yeah. And, and if there's any, any uh, uh, site of a British built bike, British rider, British team, it will, but the doors will be flung open as long as it's see, got the see, credibility. The, the, these are the things that he was saying to me. He's obviously on the sales side. The doors yeah, will be flung yeah, open. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, somebody I've spent my whole life with all my startups and everything having doors, you know, completely closed, closed on me. Yeah. So, no, if you've got the right, if you've got everything in in yeah. in, in, in line. They will absolutely. Oh, I, I mean, Dorna, Dorna, right? Dorna. Okay, sorry, okay. Dorna. They were sold a proper, uh, sold down the river with the with the Welsh MotoGP circuit. Did oh, you hear yeah, about yeah, that? Yeah. I mean, that was that was incredible. What has happened to that? It's, it's faded yeah. into nothing because it, that's what Moto was going to happen. MotoGP was going to Wales and Silverstone lost it. Yeah, and Silverstone had it back again. Yeah, because they didn't have a circuit. So they hadn't even put a spade. No, they hadn't even put a spade in the ground. When uh, F1 was going to Donington, Donington and they yeah, same. Half the track sold the bridge, and then yeah, and then never happened. Never happened. So they it, couldn't do it. So Dorna will be that they they're very uh, receptive. Yes, to to they're obviously on the defence because they've had lots of these. Lots of people have been down this route, right? And it's and yeah, uh, I mean, there was but with no Roberts, substance behind it. Okay. Roberts Racing tried it for a while. Team Roberts, yeah. yeah so I work for Team, yeah. yeah, Team Roberts, and they they did a fantastic job. They got they got to the stage where they were they were uh, rostrum positions and they were they were uh, pole positions. N never won a world championship, but you know it was still a fantastic yeah, effort. Right. It okay. is difficult. It is so, very so, difficult. So we've got this British motorcycle GP. It's not a complete fancy. People will be receptive to the yeah, concept. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Twenty twenty one is kind of a place to work to. Yeah. And then, so you were talking to me about um, how 
the riders in the UK go through a certain route historically yeah. as they come into the sport and the Italians and the Spanish come through a different route which is more amenable to yeah it's uh, more MotoGP. user friendly for MotoGP so tell, yeah. tell us a bit about uh, well basically what happens is uh, with our format we've got now it's not it's not set in stone but we've just I'll move on to that in a minute but the actual the, the, the traditional way into uh, into the world championship arena is through so you, you go through the British championships which is uh, four stroke thousand cc which is what is the, the, what's the world superbike is as well so the riders when they go through the the various um classes to get into into british superbike they're already in that uh habit of riding a four stroke right just one one thing road because there's a really noisy goddamn motorcycle you're joking go i hate there. motorcycles oh, i really mother. hate motorcycles Bloody hell. so when you look at like the the Mackenzie kids tell mm. that they've come through that, have they? Now? Yeah, they. I mean, he, he, they've done that same route. Now, Neil did try and take one of the lads into Moto Two, but it, it's if you go well, straight into it, Moto, he? but he's not doing very well. At well, all. he's not he's now. He's back in. Back, he's, it, yeah, he's so. back in Moto, Moto British Superbike yeah. now. But it, they will murder you, Moto Two riders. Yeah, you've got to brutal, be. Though. You've got to. Be, yeah, it's brutal. Same as same as Moto Three. Yeah. So you've got to be in that. You've got to be uh, brought up in it. Okay. You know. So, uh, to, so that's like we need like to start, ride like that. We yeah. need to start them much younger on a bike that has the characteristics of a motor yeah. bike much earlier. Sorry to state it in really. No, that, terms, that's that's. So who runs that's what like the Red about. Bull? Yeah. You've got the Red Bull rookies. Where does that? Fit? That's d run by Dorna. Okay. Well, it, it sits. It sits on Dorna's platform, but they. It's run by the KTM. Uh, um, racing de de okay. um, department. Because they're quite young, aren't they? Yeah, that, and that's well, yeah the academy. Yeah, that and that ones. we've got now. We've just we've just launched one in the UK now, the British um, MotoGP Academy. Okay. Which is good. It's it's it's, 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 it's funded by various people, including Dorna. They're all the same Moto3 bikes, uh, and they're, it's basically it's like a, a it's it's a mirror of what the Red Bull rookies are. Okay. But in the UK, so where and do, they, do they support BSB then? Yeah, they they run at BSB events. Yeah. So, so sorry, that's a MotoGP Academy that is running in the UK yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, just launched this uh, just this launched. year. Yeah, but it's good though. It's good because that 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 because what what we what that, that's bringing on that's bringing on the kids that will we'll we'll need to look at if this ever kicks off. Is that the it, so it's, that's for you? Much younger kids. Is yeah, they're they're thirteen. Up. 13 okay, yeah. and, what and are bikes? they the ones? Some of them are old Moto three bikes, and some yes. of them are two strokes. No, 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 all Moto three bikes. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. so they're using a Moto three bike. Yep. In that race school academy here in the UK. Yeah. But you don't feel that that's competing anyway. So there's not a plan no, behind that. No, that's good. To, that's good because to go towards a British Moto GP. Yeah, because the, the, when they see when those when those thirty riders have done that year and the one guy wins it and he gets I think he gets a ticket into Moto3 he's then got to take a chunk of money with him mm. to a established team in Moto3 you see and then he gets into that Moto3 team and then has he got his crew chief he wants has he got his his mum and dad around him has he got his it's in this completely new environment mm. you know it's scary for, for, for a kid so they can fail in that in that, yeah, yeah. They might be the t most talented guy in the world. So they've got to, you've got to nurture them into that environment. So if you've got a team that's established that can be that can welcome into that environment, you yeah. know, without having to pay money, without having to chuck, um, you know, chuck the parents out, welcome the parents, you know, you know manage the parents because so they they so can be trouble. So they just started mm. this year. So they are potentially like a feeder. Feeder, yeah, yeah, is, feeder. Mm. Is, if you were going to do something, would are they? Uh, welcome, welcoming and we yeah oh god yeah to. absolutely yeah absolutely so that, what, what were their ultimate from that whoever's running that what is their business plan how how would their objective from a business point of view which the team or the the academy the academy the academy it's all it's all funded by the industry okay so their goal is to get a british world motor gp rider champion yeah okay so they're focused on the rider and the training around yeah. the rider yeah to, to, so to, where do they go next after that series moto then? three oh so they go they don't motor go into Super no, 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 like no. Straight, straight into Moto. At the moment, they haven't got anywhere, right? Because they've just started. 
Well, they will. Dawn will have a team that will they probably have an investment in that will say, right, your next rider is going to be the, Brit the winner of the British MotoGP Academy. And, and we're going to pay you £100,000 and £200,000 to have him. And they've got to accept him. Because Dawn, so that's who, part of Dawn. What's the team that McPhee rides for? Yeah, he's, he's in with a team that's um, funded by like a... Like a I think it's that's a, a British chassis. something team, isn't it? Yeah, it's not actually. It's it's part it's partly funded by Dorna and partly funded by a charity. Oh, okay. And the guy who owns a charity, I think it's a charity, some sort of fundraising um, business, and and part of that it's for like motorsport. It's a fundraising for motorsport. He does it. He he helps kids in in car racing, in karting. Oh, okay. and, you know all that sort of, and, and this is which is one and of those, one of those, one of those, right? Yeah. All right. So let's see if we can level set us again. So we've sort of said uh, manager race team, then we jumped on. Let's create a British Motor GP bike. Well, that that's the end. That's the end result. Yeah. yeah. So and then we're talking in about between, the journey. Yeah. We're talk about the journey, and um, uh, uh, we're, we're we're really talking about the riders in the UK. Yeah. And. Uh, when they have to compete with the Spanish and Italian riders, they haven't come through the same her heritage. Yeah, that's uh, which, pretty much. Which is a disadvantage. But yeah. we're saying that in the UK, there is a new MotoGP Academy. Yeah. And you're saying Dorna will be taking a rider, whoever the wins winners, that, yeah, yeah. Dorna will take the rider. Yeah. Um, okay. So, right, so. So, so what, yeah. So yeah so let, me, let me try and elaborate a little bit. So, but for me, running a team is, an absolute it's not a waste of money it's it's like having a, your, your premier league team you know like if you if you're a multi-billionaire it's like a hobby isn't yeah, it? and then then there, there's your there's your way of spending your, yeah. a bit of a bit of your dough and having fun with your money yeah uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a it's a similar thing running a, a, a race team uh you can get part funding with sponsors but you'll never cover everything it'll always have to someone's got to put their hand in the pocket at some point so my which is great if you've got a good sponsor sh sponsors around you that want to do that but my uh my or my, a lot of people would want the best way of doing it would be to manufacture a product so manufacture a moto 3 chassis manufacture a moto 2 chassis there's your there, and and to so build your own infrastructure have your race team build your own moto 3 bike build your own moto 2 bikes Go and race them, and then win everything. <laughs> and then, see what I mean? Is he real? Well, win, everything. win everything. Yeah. And then sell your chassis okay. to the paddock. Okay. A right. There's there's so a bit of had, income. Okay, there's a bit so of. Where we had uh, interesting. So where we had the chat before, the thing that stuck in my mind the most was really a model where we'd be building. A bike that um, people, young riders coming in the UK, um, can uh, 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 use as a British MotoGP bike for, you know, in yeah. the UK. Yeah. So that's so that's still that's, you can still do so that. That's like yeah, the yeah. second rung. So the first rung that you've mentioned now is that you, you do the type, the team and the bike. It can be. Whole, it's a chicken and the, the egg thing, thing, isn't it? Yeah. To end. Mm. But then you're saying a second rung might be that you then take your bike and start offering that as a platform for young UK riders. Yeah. It, it is, it is, uh, it's, a, it's a mosh pit at the minute. It can be, you know, your head will be spinning, my head's spinning, and yours yeah. is spinning, of what, how to, how to create the, the route. Because the there's so many, there's, well, there's lots of options. Yeah, just but, to recap again, so, you, 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 you've mentioned having an end-to-end -end team, that's where you might start. So you're talking about building your bike yeah. and having the rider, that whole thing. Yeah. But that would be a loss maker like all the others. It would. Get right. yeah. then, then from the hopefully success of that, yeah. then um, creating a platform bike that young riders can use. Yeah. And what you were talking about there is um, what the two sets of 60 riders you said uh, yeah that are coming in yeah and pretty so much you're 120 to 200 bikes yeah you, but you wouldn't get that many you know you wouldn't do that 
because there'll be other people who want someone else's different chassis. Okay. There'd only be a small, it would be a, pulp, a, a portion of that, yeah. a portion of that, um, but you would get it and it, that'd be income. And then you could rent, you could lease, you could okay. sell. So we're talking about, so then you've got uh, your platform, I'm calling it platform, trying to adopt the, no, platform is your marketing platform. Yeah, yeah, platform. yeah, yeah. So what do we call that? What's the generic term for? Manufacture? No, so, the, the actual, Concept. The bike itself, basically. But it's um, a, it, what do we call it? It's a unit, of, a thing. Of, so people just, I mean, obviously we just call it a bike, but we're talking about an engine, suspension, and, and yeah, our rolling, own chassis, yeah, chassis, rolling our chassis. Own chassis. Yeah, so yeah. the whole thing mm. is the bike. Yes. Right, as, as the, the yeah, you, but you'd have, you'd have, you know, like you'd have the forks would be would be donor forks from from uh, Olin's or, or yeah, or, okay, yeah, and, and the wheels would be. Um, Marcazinis or something. You know, there, there's, right. there's things that you yeah, don't try and make. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't. Yeah, you, yeah. The, the actual. Uses, it's yeah, the, the fabrication, around the that. construction around. It's all the all the packaging, the construction would be yours. Okay. And that's what that's where the the advantage will be. Yeah. To, if you package that correctly and do the right geometry and work uh, the right uh, central gravity and all that sort of yeah. thing, it will be uh, a race winner. <laughs> and the advantage that is point. that it's race well, it, it, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, there's a window, there's a window, Paul, right? A geometry yeah. window yeah. In, mo in motorcycling, and if you stick with that the window, you're gonna you're gonna have a you're gonna have a package that's gonna be win win a, can, can win at some point. trying to hit that same window. No, because you get a lot of people who think they know better. Well, that might be like us, right? We think we know. No, better. no, I won't let I won't let that happen. You won't let it happen. No, okay. it won't because it because it would be a All waste right. of time. We've been there so many times. Okay, so many. So people. this is this is what. I'm just going to restate again. So got, <laughs> the wrong one is the whole end to end with our own bike and a rider mm. and the whole team. Mm. But second is the, this object of having a, 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 a um, engine, chassis yeah. uh, thing that we can then offer to other people. And you're talking about um, uh, also the economies of scale there for those people so that they can actually get, get yeah. the race cheaper. Yeah. Um, or more cost effectively. Yeah. Um, and we've got technicians as well that they can refer yeah. to. So you've got, really you got a support team. You'd have to have a support team. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, it's not everybody that's hands on. I mean, when we used to do the carting, you know, we used to tinker about with the cart all the time ourselves. But you've got people who just, as a driver, turned up. Yeah. Because they yeah, paid, that's it. paid for rail that's or right, they yeah. paid somebody and they had a marquee and their cart was there all prepared and ready for them and they just turned up and drove it. Yeah, that right. concept so could still work. About that. And they got rich parents yeah. who just funded it. Chuck money out, yeah. Okay, Cause all right. the, that's the an option, parent, yeah. Like, so that's what you were saying, you know, some people Dave got Richards like a 50k used to do it. budget or something and yeah, you could, want to get their yeah. son or daughter. Yeah, Dave there. Richards used to do it with his son because he used to do it at the same time as I did karting with George and he just used to turn up him and his wife used to turn up in the Porsche and the Aston and he used to come onto the grid. He hadn't got a clue what he was doing because Dave Richards ain't a hands-on guy. He's a yeah. Is that the pro drive? Pro drive, yeah, yeah. And he mm. just used to turn up with his lad and his lad was useless but used to race. Okay, but he so used to is... pay a team to manage the team. And in fairness, John Surtees used to do the same when his son was racing. Because right. I've been on the grid yeah. the same time as okay. John yeah. Surtees and his lad, which unfortunately, which I think was the one yeah, that got, got killed. killed. So yeah, that's the second rung on the ladder. But they used to turn up and have a managed team. Yeah, that, that was yeah. a karting yeah. model. Yeah, not, same, it's but, the, yeah, yeah but it's the same, same thing. Model. that I mean, that, that never used to happen in, in, in bikes. But that's, that's now dripped into the bike world. Yeah. And that's, that is a very, very good example okay. now. So another yeah. point then that you mentioned to me, just moving us on a bit, is... Um, you were talking about the industry changing and um, you know a broader range of bikes and less people are interested in that smaller 600 super sport range mm, yeah that, that that's, that's and so maybe so that's likely to um, what's that the British super sport might uh, go yeah that that's that's that, that might be speak to people about yeah it's still that, it's might the, that might be the third run the yeah the team the second run the platform then the third run becoming a... A Moto2 championship. So like right. 600, Super Sport 600 now, has been a really strong class for uh, for a long time because the manufacturers make 600 motorbikes and then, so they support it. So Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, Kawasaki, Triumph, they all want to win that championship because it will sell them more bikes yeah. at the end of it. So they all, they all help fund that and it's been a really strong championship and it's a good feeder into British Superbike. But that's now... 
steering away from that a little bit. Super sport sales have gone down in, 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 in the UK and around Europe. So they're not bringing in new bikes every year now. So it's wearing a bit thin now, that championship. Still very good to watch, but what was going to happen at some point is that championship's going to be a Moto2. It's going to turn, it's going to completely change its terminology to Moto2. At some point, yeah, at some like point. A year? Well, th that could be, that Three could years, be, years. no, it could be, it could be, uh, it could be launched next year. Really? Yeah, it could be launched in two years' time, but it won't be five years' time. But the thing with that is, if there's a, if there's a UK manufacturer that can go to Stuart Higgs and put a package together that's going to be cost effective, it, it could. Who's, who's Stuart Higgs? He's the direct race director and shareholder for British Superbike. Right, right. His so, partner is Jonathan Palmer. You, yeah, sorry, you Jonathan know. Palmer. Yeah, yeah. Who's fun? Who's got them? He owns Jonathan seven Palmer. circuits seven, in the yeah, UK. Circuit, circuit, His yeah. son used to be an F1. I oh, know, no, Jonathan Palmer. Just yeah, when yeah. I did race techs fifteen years ago, which was a sports text messaging messaging service, I was trying to oh, sell yeah. the brand's hat. Oh yeah, okay, so. Yeah, it's one of his tracks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So why so, hasn't just, why hasn't any of the other British like Triumph, why haven't they tried to do it? Tri they're not, just not, uh, they're not they, interested. Why wouldn't they try yeah. to do it? Well, Triumph aren't really a race. They're not driven by racing. John Bloor, who who's owns and, and evolved that company, he's always been, um, it's always been what, um, low on his, on his agenda racing mm. he's always gone through the route where it's touring it's um you know it's the, the cruiser yeah, adventure it's cruises, sports that yeah. sort of thing and he, he's, he's reluctantly now he's gone to the trend of bobbers and scramblers yeah and yeah and that, that's uh, that's uh um, so so model, I, so i last weekend was speaking to someone and they said is it the, the, the motor gp2 used to be a ktm uh plan uh, a honda oh. Honda, Honda, yeah, Honda. six six hundred Honda, so, yeah, still is. Triumph, though, are providing. Yeah, next year. Next year. So mm. Tell us a bit about. Well, that's again, that's a great contract for Triumph. If you if you think that they're gonna, that's a that's a, that's a basically it's a commercial agreement between Dorna and Triumph. But it's a good, it's a nice little marketing tool. Uh, without, and but they're getting paid for doing it. And what engine? What engine? It's is a Triumph triple. Offering? Triple. It's just a. Start their standard triple engine. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Well, it's it, that's what the plan was, but they're having a lot of trouble at the minute trying to get it to, to the, the target horsepower and torque curve um, from that engine. So they're having to spend a lot of development money on on the on the standard. But is engine. Triumph doing that? Or is yeah, Triumph. Doing they're doing partner, it. No, full triumph. So triumph, triumph. Triumph. So they're not into racing, but they're going to have well, people working on there's racing. There's a third party in the middle. So you've got Triumph who who will build and develop the engine to a level that's that, that's in the agreement. To the spec, it's in the agreement. Then once that's built, then those engines will be sh will be uh, given to a, a company that man manages it at the events. So yeah. it, they'll have they'll have all the engines on their on their truck. They'll have technicians. They'll have spare parts. They'll have spare engines, and they'll manage the whole project. It's the yeah. same same company that's managing the project for Honda. With okay. the motor two now. They just provide all the engine and the backup on the same as having Pirelli there or yeah. Michelin or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, same same concept. Yeah. Right, so we've got, th I can see three rungs going on there. Okay, so one of the things I've been bringing out is, um, it seems really ambitious. Um, so something that might help us understand, that, and, and Andy as well, if you can let us know, what, what's this whole relationship you had with the Patronus team then? Oh, because that's okay. really what people go, oh, you know what you're talking about. Well, you're talking okay. about from, credibility. From us and dummies. You, you mentioned okay. the start credibility, and you almost need that front name, don't you, which is what happened with Patronus. Yeah, well, okay. Well, Patronus was um, quite. Uh, it's a long story, but I'll try and. You don't have I'll try to send and, a whole story. No, but it's hard not to. Yeah. Well. Not, well, not, well, not what I'll tell you, no. But the um, the basics of it was, it went down. It was it was as as simple as a conversation like this with with Foggy. I know Foggy oh, from Foggy. yeah. I know Foggy from a long time ago. Uh, we raced against each other. We hung out together. We played footy together. So we were, we were good. We were good mates. And then we, uh, when he f crashed in Australia and hurt his shoulder, and and said he was going to stop racing. Oh, yeah, he became a brand ambassador for, for Ducati, which meant that he turned up at circuits, signed autographs, and, and, and did a and, great yeah, lap yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and went, and went home again. Yeah, the the time. that's it. And he did a couple of those and was totally fed up. And we were playing soccer one night. We sat down after had a beer and we were chatting. And I said to him, "Why don't you get your, have your own team?" 
We've heard that before, haven't you? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, but that's different. Yeah, saying that to Carl Fogarty. Carl Fogarty. Yeah. Nobody recognises and, him. And Carl's media... But... Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> Foggy's, Foggy's answer to that was, uh, I'm not going to... I'm not going to spend my money on racing motorbikes. I said, you don't have to. You use somebody else's. He says, who's going to sponsor the team when I'm not riding them for it? He didn't quite get the concept. Mm. So I explained the concept to him. And he said, he went off and said, well, you, you, if you can get the money, Boz, we'll do it. So we put a few press releases out and did some PR and some, some, um, a, bit of, a bit of tapping up motorcycle news and that sort of stuff. And, and eventually some guy rung us from, from Malaysia called David Wong, who was the motorsport manager, consultant for Petronas. And he said, I've got a plan. But at the same time, running at the same time was a project for um, Sauber. Sauber were the, uh, t uh, their title sponsor was Petronas at the time, F1. And, and when you have a relationship with Petronas, they want to educate their, their engineers because they know that at some point the oil and gas is going to run out. Mm. They need to, need to uh, transfer their, their, their knowledge and Towards skills into other, into other industries. So they would do all these sort of projects for that. So it was learning from the white man. That's, what they actually, that's how they termed it. Yeah. So they had four or five of their top engineers based at Sauber on special projects because Sauber's a big engineering company that does F1. And so what this special project was, it is a long story, but it's important, was uh, for, as two strokes were going, evolving from Grand Prix to MotoGP, so it was going from two strokes to four strokes, their engineers had a brilliant idea to build a four stroke engine, MotoGP engine, to lease out to the MotoGP teams. That was a concept. So where they started was with three cylinders off the F1 car, which was a Ferrari engine at the time. That's what, that was their base, which was, the, which was the wrong thing to do for a motorbike because of the bore and stroke. It was all, all uh, um, revs and no torque. So that concept was, was flawed from the start, but we didn't know that. So they built this MotoGP engine and they launched it at Sepang, uh, the last Grand Prix of, the, of that season, two-stroke Grand Prix, with the hope that they would get some, some teams interested. No one was interested. So they, uh, when David Wong saw this, that Foggy wanted a team, he's a world superbike legend, yeah. uh, we've got this engine, uh, Foggy wants to go racing, we've got something here. So he came up with the, with the idea of let's go world superbike race riding with this with this engine. But it, but this engine was built for MotoGP, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that was the difficult part. The first thing we had to do was, if we're going to do this, was build 150 motorbikes because it's got to be a homologated motorbike to go into. So it, it was absolutely. You think this conversation we were having is mad? This was madder. And it happened. We did it. So, it's and you, you, so you, Matt, okay. So you put out the feelers. So somebody saw it. They approached you and said, "Yeah, we've got an engine. Um, can you do it?" And then, and then you sort of, uh, managed that for mm. three. You said three, three years. Three years. Five. Yeah, three, four years, and then three years once it went when it went live. It was a year behind that to get it up to the level. Okay, but the. The, the, we did, yeah. We, we, it was an incredible uh, project, and, and nobody, nobody still believes to this day that we built 150 motorbikes. Where are they? Then? Weren't they found in Essex somewhere? In, no, they weren't found. They yeah, were. They, they you were, never see any on the road, do you? No, I, I know where there's, there's one in the UK, oh, okay. uh, in uh, in Boston, in, in a motorcycle shop. We've got because um, the, the way the rules are, you have to build 75. For the first twelve months, for the first six months of the year, and then seventy-five for the second part of the year. So, and then you can you can start racing on on January the first of that year. But by by uh, July that year, you've got to have seventy-five built, and then you know so. Right. Uh, and that's what we did. And uh, the first seventy-five were built ready for July inspection by the FIM, and it was a it's a it's a um, a random turnkey start um, out of the seventy-five bikes. 
So they've all got to be fueled and ready for the start. For the FIM to... Uh, and they to, just pick any one they out. Pick, they pick random. So they've got to run. They've got to run, yeah. yeah. You don't nudge a couple out with a little fiver on the front wheel or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there was lots of lots of stories of how we managed this. There was a, a <laughs> Memphis Rocket. Still brown envelope under the right bikes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, say no more, say no more. This I is could, the bike. Is, that, is this, on, this, not, on, this on film? Let's not, no, I'm just saying you that. Can, You're just you can edit that a bit. I can edit that out. Yeah, um, I, I, okay, so 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 basically, we had the project was then uh, we, we had the budget and everything. The budget was an incredible amount of uh, money, and we could build. Uh, we built six race bikes, and on the back of that, we built 150 uh, road bikes. So, uh, and we had to put a team together. We had to build a base for the team. We had to build the trucks. Yeah. We had to um, uh, do the logistics of that project. We had to have hospitality built um so and i managed uh, the, whole the whole lot from the so start so the reason yeah, i asked that question year. it was I mean, fun years so yeah i'm yeah, asking yeah. that question obviously because you know going from chucking a pint of beer onto some random person on christmas eve yeah to to to, to then encouraging them to invest all of their money hard in money. my ico which we didn't do and then Okay, then run a, a racing team. Interesting. Oh, let's build a British MotoGP. So that's important because at least we know you're not talking shit, <laughs> right? I like that. I like that. So, so we're running out of time. So I would say, so when the fact that you suggested it could be a project that I consider doing, um, I said, is it because you think I've made lots of money doing this ICO or? had lots of money to do the ICO and you felt, you said no. So my question is, and it's a question you'd be asking too, in fact, you implied it at the beginning of the conversation. What the fuck are you asking me for? Because you're a bit of a doer. Okay. <laughs> Am I? I mean, if you're, if you're I'll I call suppose. I've a few things over the years. Yeah. <laughs> you a I mean, if, I mean, you, yeah. you, you can't, I mean. Uh, you got to have some energy. You got to have some energy and focus. some, some, um, Drive, some interest some risk. and some yeah and, and some excitement you, you do get focused on something and, then and when, I go for years, years on it until on until I've, I've, yeah. so this current one was four years so I mean it's I it, for quite well, but, it, but, but remember but we, I'm just wondering whether some dodgy uh, you know middle aged geezer wandering around the paddock trying to persuade people that just no, I, I'm just going to be on another planet, right? Yeah, you, you, you're not. You stay away from the motorcycle industry. To, to if you need to raise, if we need to raise funds for this project, stay away from the motorcycle industry because they've got no money. You've got to go outside of that industry. That's what hence the 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 the, the, the this cryptocurrency. It's, you know, you, so, so the really amount of people you mentioned to me who've yeah. done well with it and they're sitting yes. on a pile of money and they yeah, don't know what to do with it. With it. So that's, that's, that's really probably where I wanted to conclude because obviously that will be in my head is how I can combine this new crypto asset economy with, you know, mm. motor, motor cycle racing well, first, and British bike heritage. Yeah. How can I bring the two together? And a simple thing I said to Andy is we go every year in October to the Stafford, is it? Yeah, um, Stafford show. A good show, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And I know it sounds like ridiculous <coughs> in the world of crypto and global... Uh, That's a million miles away, Stafford show. Global yeah. blockchain. Yeah, and you see the people wondering. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. You, you mentioned, yeah. And well, you mentioned those are the blockchain. People that still remember for... Blockchain, are they think you've got when... problems with your toilet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that doesn't matter. But I would, there's, there's a lot of people there that remember the golden Where well, they would, because half of them still ride them, yeah. yeah. Well, um, actually, if you went to the British one that's in March, April, May, to early, they do Stafford this. earlier in the year, yeah. and it's all Brit bikes, and it is all Enfields. And so, so I do have some ideas. And all that. Uh, I do have some I mean, ideas. Just, to, I just to add to that. I could what do I've... a crypto asset for people that, you know, literally to raise money, crypto asset, to fund the whole thing. And in the business model mm. of the product, I mean, obviously this is not someone, something people would even dream of thinking about in the motorcycle racing no. industry or the motorcycle no. manufacturing industry, but being from an investment banking background, yeah. I see ecosystems, I, I can see people motivated to, to contribute that may um, get a return through a completely different way that people haven't thought yeah, of before. Yeah, yeah. 
and it's those concepts that obviously I explore in technology and in these crypto assets and the blockchain so I have some ideas of how I can do that even the meeting on Wednesday with someone mm. from Toyota um, who's involved with the World Trade Organization and supply chain I even saw how I could oh, right. get something in I mean you would never even believe that the two related no okay. I saw how I could That's get just, a product yeah, yeah. that was supply chain product to help people with provenance in the supply chain and create a behavioral model an incentive model with the crypto asset in there to encourage people to make their supply chain more transparent yeah. because they have problems with just tier one tier two they, they need to see the whole depth of the supply chain right but be able to then link that with with actually creating the, this motorcycle yeah, yeah. Like, um and, and then get somehow finding the funding to do that i mean so, the thing is as well what you, what 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 can evolve out of this is is what what Triumph have done, what Norton have done, re, re well, Norton have relaunched, relaunched the brand. Though, obviously, they? in this year at the TT, but unfortunately, John wasn't no. ready to ride it, was he? But, no. But I mean, I've been wandering around the British Motorcycle Museum. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm a member now. Okay. So I know the ladies, and I go up there and have a, I just no. waltz. Well, there's there's plenty of brands Scott there that can Panther, still be launched. Scott yeah. Panther, lots and lots. Obviously, you mentioned Greaves. But I thought Greaves really one it off road, isn't it? More like I also wanted to explore. Let's not forget. Yes, there are brands that we can resurrect. But what about the future and the young people coming into it? So I'd hope to get a young guy here today. Um, well, hopefully get him if yeah. we have a chat again. And uh, so he's like 25, 26. I've known him since a little kid, going racing and off road racing with us. Yeah, and he's totally dedicated to motorcycles. Because he's been building them since he was 12. Oh, awesome! Yeah, all okay. the way through. Yeah, and he's done a auto, um, you know, mechanics degree. Wow. Um, okay. You know, and uh, he, he just, you know, how you talent spot. Yeah. Well, obviously, I'm, I'm sort of saying that. You know, I believe that the future isn't me. By the no, time this normally. brand is really running in yeah, yeah. time, you know, I, I'm not associated with that younger rider that's coming no, through. No, no, no. Um, where he is. Yeah. So I wouldn't, uh, if I did this, I would try and find a way of getting that uh, younger I mean, person yeah, involved. Absolutely. I mean, the, the, for me, uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it would be a fantastic end result wouldn't it for everyone we could all sit back couldn't we we could still come back here in 20 years time if we're still here and so say how good for that we could just yeah, got a few well, minutes good, good time I just yeah because it always looks it's a fun it's a fun environment it's a absolutely. fun yeah, environment yeah, yeah. Mm. so there's it one always, problem with yeah. it though there's one problem that's been in the back of my head all the time with this so when you start talking about younger people when you start talking about technology and where a lot of the people in the crypto asset space uh, 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 see the world they, they are uh, you know Elon Musk Fanatics, they oh, eco friendly cars, electric cars, da 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 da. Um, so, my concern was, what does what would that mean? We'd be creating something a British brand MotoGP bike, but we're still with an internal combustion engine. And uh, what would that mean? Well, you wouldn't you run a, a, a parallel with an electric bike? There's plenty or of technology around hybrid, it. A hybrid, like, trouble with the battery yeah. race bikes at the moment, they're all too heavy. Yeah, you know, I mean, they run half a dozen of them around the TT, don't they? Every year, just do a lap. We can do a they lap. Do a lap, they? but they can only do a lap because they run out of battery. But they're too heavy. They're too heavy. So if we were sport. talking about rungs of the ladder, you see, you see, well, looking at the rungs, how do you start? Where do you go? British Motor GP, get in there with with the technology that well, we're if, with now. But yeah. that could be the the top. Rung. Well, at the minute, look, um, I think there's going to be. Uh, um, a race at, held at some of the European MotoGP events of electric bike racing. They launched a bike um, at Jerez, I think. Um, so they've got some some concept they, they're pushing. Well, it's not at the impossible, minute. is it? I mean, you look at Formula E, which yeah. initially was like, you know, it was like watching milk folks race. It was so fucking boring. Terrible, wasn't it? Yeah. But they've got brands in it now. Everybody, you know, well, all the Williams, yeah. you've got Jaguar in it now. You've got drivers with actual talent. And yeah, it, it's going. Now uh, I mean, yeah. the Robo one. I, I mean, that's going up the hill at Goodwood in a couple of weeks. Is it? Because they're, they're launching a race series without drivers, which that one I find a well, bit. Well, this odd, is where I. We when spoke you said about that, because people follow drivers, people and talent. Yeah, 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 follow, yeah. You know, so we'll always have a person follow, rider. Yeah, 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 or, yeah. yeah. Or, so, yeah. Or, yeah. Or, they follow, you know, yeah, like okay, it, the it, yeah. They follow the people. Yeah. If you've got a Robo car, there'll be a certain 
probably, I'm Clip judging here now, but these Bitcoiny type crypto y people that have come from gamers, because there's an online bloody F1 race series now. Yeah, yeah it's, it's big. Yeah, gaming is big now, isn't it? Yeah. You know, and they do it and they're sweating like a sweating thing when they've finished it. They've got stadiums, full stadiums, aren't they? Stadiums, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. I can't quite. You know, e-sport like isn't it yeah. e-sport mm. and that's the but those sort of people would be into like that full robo yeah. so i've got a few things to but, say off camera on that but so um nigel so i kind of believe you now and i've got a witness kind of yeah so um obviously i mean it, know, it is I keep coming back to you every week or so go yeah so it's there it's hovering there that's good what it means i've, to, I've what, lit the what, flame have i the flame's there and, we're, and I'm already talking to my partner about, okay, how do we fund it? Do we sell the house? Do we go and see no, Julian no, and get him to house. get me a barge? No, We live no. on a barge. No, don't do that, Get the leverage so that we're free don't, to... Your, your lifestyle shouldn't focus. change because of it. Absolutely not. You just need to find somebody who is enthusiastic about motorsport. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because that's the only reason, as you've said, it's the only reason any of them sponsor motorsport is because they get the shirt. Because they get the yeah. shirt. They get the no, shirt. Really. They get to go to the. Yeah. They're on the grid they with the rider. The well, they're in maybe, the grid. It's all that. It's all that. But yeah. Maybe the crypto asset community. We want a uh, bit of that. Th th they would want a bit because maybe. the ultimate <coughs> in any crypto asset conference is there's always a special parking place for all the Lamborghinis. Yeah. The Lambo. Lambo boys. boys. Oh, I got three Lambos got this Lambo, week. Yeah. I made five Lambos. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Nigel. Yeah, well, that, that's, so that's a concept. Yeah. Okay. In, a, in a, as, as brief as he can be. Good stuff. Thanks, Sandy. Say thanks to me. Hey. Oh, yeah, thank you, Paul. <laughs> See, you're dragging <laughs> me up here in the sun. <laughs> where yeah. do you live, Andy? I live in Banbury. Oh, okay. Funny enough, that's where, where Robert Team Robert's were, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to go there every day. 